Something that I've always kind of just noticed with various products in the firearms industry, if something is very polarized, it makes me very curious. If a lot of people bandwagon on something, whether it's for or against it, that usually makes me suspect. And so that's what made me want to do the Palmetto State Armory stupid cheap AR pistol build. There was people that loved them. Then there was people that hated them. We got this build for super cheap, you know. Aside from the red dot, we built this for less than $500. I believe it was $440-ish. But, you know, I did add the red dot and I've added a lot of other goodies to it. So we're gonna look at those up close here in a second. We're also gonna talk about one of these goodies I don't really like and I'm actually gonna be taking it off. Don't worry guys, I, I got your back. I'll definitely have a complete build list for you for any of these parts. If you're watching this on YouTube, just check the very first link in the video description. So let's look at these accessories, talk about what I don't like what I do like what I'm gonna do next then we're gonna do my final review of this AR pistol then I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to make this into a backpack gun so yeah this is the Palmetto State AR pistol that we've been building and for those of you who have been following this series you're gonna notice that we got quite a few new upgrades and there are pros and cons to a couple of these which we really need to talk about so we're gonna just start up front this is the strike industries SI link um, hand stop. I like this a lot. It, it's definitely my favorite hand stop to date. I just like all the different ways you can grip it. Um, I actually mentioned this exact hand stop in my most recent AR video that was about the top five AR mods that I like to do first. Um, it fits key mod or M lock, so you don't really got to worry about that. The little guys inside of here, they are made to work with either one, but I just like it and it's available in a ton of different colors. Um, so it does look really nice. The next mod that I did was the Sylvan Arms Magwell. And essentially the way this works is it replaces your trigger guard. Originally this had the Magpul trigger guard that's a little bit curved. And this one is not quite as curved, but I wanted to try this out. And I gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of it. You know, the main benefit to a Magwell is very similar to the, what it is on a handgun. It adds a little ramp to help you reload faster quote unquote. Just though, like just kind of playing around. Now I'm not a, an operator of any kind, guys. So just take my opinion as a grain of salt here. But I didn't notice a huge benefit on reloads. You know, you still gotta have your mag at the correct orientation. You know, if you come in like that, come in like that, it doesn't really shoot your mag into there easier. At least as far as I notice. Maybe someone that's a professional, maybe they notice. I think that's a waste. I'm gonna revert back to the Magpul trigger guard. I mean, if you are into doing competitions and stuff and you don't use ETS mags, maybe it is something for you. Now, I don't have any Lancer mags or Hex mags to try on it, so I can't really help you with that. Now, moving on back, we actually have a brand new trigger in the gun here. And this is the, so that is the Geisley SD3G trigger, the super dynamic three gun trigger. I have one on my AR-10, which we're actually gonna be doing a video on here in a couple of days, cause I got some new upgrades for it. This one is a two stage trigger. Um, I've never tried a two stage trigger ever in my life. I've always gotten single stage triggers. So I was very interested to try that out. Now, typically most people put two stage triggers on guns that they're gonna try to shoot long distances with. I will probably swap it out. Maybe I won't, I don't know yet. But here's what I noticed about it. Right here, that's your take up, right? And people that like two, two stage triggers, they love this. They wanna be able to get that take up and then break and then reset and break. Now, one thing you should know about two stage triggers is when it resets, it's gonna reset to the first position, not the breaking position. Let me show you. So when we reset, and then we can come back to the wall. So that's something that's a little bit different. Now I will say this, you know, you guys kind of saw the footage. I was able to shoot very quickly with this gun. And when you hit the trigger quickly, you don't even notice it's a two stage trigger. It literally feels like a one, just a single stage trigger just going like that. So that's very interesting. I will try my best to find coupon codes and stuff for that that I'll put in the build list. Let's do a quick trigger pull test, see what it's pulling at. And I'm just gonna hold this shoe straight. All right, about a two and a half pound pull. That's, uh, that's actually really good. I like that a lot. 
Um, a couple of other parts that you'll see on here, I actually yanked them off of my 300 Blackout. I did a 300 Blackout around last year at this time. Now, I love my 300 Blackout, but they are stupid expensive to shoot for what you get. And it's one of those guns you wanna shoot very quickly, but every time you pull that trigger, it's like 50 cents or more. So on that build, I had a Lantac Enhanced Bolt Carrier Group, and I had a, an Aero Precision Ambidextrous Charging Handle. I love Nickel Boron because super easy to clean. Oh, and we'll get to this, but one thing you gotta know about these folding stock adapters, there's a little plug right here you gotta take out before you can disassemble the actual gun. Now I've already done a video kind of going over all the features of this bolt carrier group in my video on how to choose a bolt carrier group. So this is the enhanced bolt carrier group. And let me show you, we, we put, I think 90-ish, 90 something rounds through it the other day. I haven't cleaned it since we went to the range and I just got here and then we made a video. Let me just show you, I mean, I am literally just wiping this off towel. I mean, I, have spray, I haven't sprayed anything on it. And that's why I like Nickel Boron is they clean up super nicely and I love them to death. Another reason I wanted to put it into this gun is I haven't put a lot of rounds. I think I've only put about 500 rounds through my 300 Blackout and I need to put more through it, but I need to test this out a lot more. I had the Sylvan Arms folding stock adapter. And what I found about this one that I didn't like was I didn't like it didn't fold completely flush. A lot of people were like, yeah, dude, why, why doesn't it go all the way flush? That's super annoying because um, the main reason you'd even want to put one of these on a gun is for storage purposes. And, you know, putting them in a backpack or in the back of your truck or something like that. And so that was really annoying. Sylvan Arms actually watched that video and they've since corrected it. You can see that it folds 100% flat. I mean, look at that thing. It's flat as a pancake. And it does have a little detent. So if you're holding it upside down, it doesn't fall. But it's not super stiff, so you could shake it and then it would fall. And it comes with everything you need, I guess, to put it all together. It uses this little plug so you can't shoot it when the gun is open. So that's one thing. You can't, you gotta use this little plug here. Put that and it fits into the back of your bolt carrier group and then it closes short. So I do like this one now that it actually folds completely flat. That is absolutely amazing. Now I believe that these folding stock adapters go for about 150-ish dollars, between 150 and 180 dollars just depending on where you pick them up. And you know if we folded it, that's actually a really small form factor right here, aside from that big honking uh, prism scope on the top. But hey, that's kind of cool. I actually really like that. I will say the main con that I have to this is this hinge right here. I, I do think you would really benefit from a ambidextrous charging handle. Was because if you don't, this you can hit your knuckles on this hinge here. Now if you get an extended one, it's not as bad, but you could still hit it. So I like that anyway. If you're charging it from this side, you can you don't have to take your eyes off the target. So that's pretty nice. Now let's talk about if I had any malfunctions or not with this and if I have any other plans for it. Back up top. You know, like I mentioned up close, I'm gonna be taking this magwell off. I don't really feel like this magwell serves a purpose, at least for my style of shooting. You know, I'm not a tactical operator, regardless, despite the name of the channel being Tactical Toolbox. Funny story, I actually created that name to kind of make fun of people who are uber tactical, but, but that's a different topic, different video for a different day. I feel like the price and the restrictions that this magwell gives me just is not worth it. You know, like I said, I can't use my ETS mags, which I actually really enjoy using them. And I haven't had any issues with ETS mags. So until one really starts giving me any types of issues, I'm just gonna keep recommending them. I'm gonna be going back to the Magpul trigger guard. Strike Industries, these things are good to go. These Geisley triggers, you know, I brought this up in my last video about the top five AR mods that I like to do first. One of the things I said about the Geisley triggers was they're bomb proof. They have a great reputation. They have military contracts and things like that. So whenever anyone asks me, what is your go-to aftermarket AR trigger? If price wasn't an option, it's always gonna go to Geisley. And I just absolutely love their triggers and gotta be honest like i've never tried a two-stage before like i said the cool thing i like about it when you're pulling the trigger fast it really does not feel like a two-stage trigger
And when you're shooting fast, you're not really riding reset. You're just slapping the crap out of that trigger. So you never notice it's a two stage until you actually want to slow down and think about it. The Holosun 510C, a lot of people have been blowing me up about this saying, hey, what do you think about it? How's it holding up? It's holding up very well. Now I had my re reservations when I first got this because they are affordable and they are similar to EOTech and the design is very similar to the original EOTechs. And for those of you who don't know, EOTechs had their fair share of problems in the past. I like the shake awake feature. So this will shut off when it's motionless. And then when the moment it senses motion, it instantly kicks on. I like the multiple reticles. Um, I do have a full video on this up close. I will link that in the video description so you can watch that after this video. Now, as far as the AR pistol kit is concerned, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, one thing that always really interests me is when people get very polarized on a product or a topic or anything like that. And, and Palmetto State Armory is one of those companies where people have a love-hate relationship with them, very similar to like Glock. You know, Glock has a very divided audience. You know, people love it or they hate it. There's very few people in the middle ground. You know, one thing I do know about Palmetto State Armory was the only reason that they started creating really affordable AR-15s because they believe that every American should be able to afford an AR-15. AR-15. And so their profit margins are actually quite low on these. It's all made in the United States of America. All of it's made to mil spec standards. If I had to list one con about this entire AR pistol, at least from the parts that came from Palmetto State Armory, yeah, they probably could have used a little bit of a better barrel. And what I mean by that is maybe they could have used cold hammer forged barrels. Um, and they do offer cold hammer forged barrels in their premium line, which are made by FN. I think they're made by FN. But you can't expect to get an AR pistol for $440 and get all the bells and whistles that you want. That's just not in the cards. So keep that in mind. You can get these build kits. I shared one on our Facebook page the other day. It was $279 shipped AR pistol. All you needed was a strip lower, which are which is like another 40 bucks. That I think is amazing. I think it even had sights with it. And the reason they're able to sell them for so cheap is because a lot of the stuff is made in-house. Some of the parts they do outsource. But the cool thing is when they do outsource a lot of the parts, a lot of those companies that they outsource to, they actually buy those companies. So they theoretically make it in-house. That's how they were able to make uh, their AKs that they make, you know, because they bought the companies that were making the AKs and then just changed all the quality assurance standards. So this is a very fun gun. It's easy to shoot. It's easy to shoot fast and it's easy to build. Now talking about reliability, I've had no malfunctions with it at all. I think we're around the 800 round mark as of right now, with only 90 of those rounds not being through the bolt carrier group that uh, was included with this. Now there's nothing wrong with the bolt carrier group that was included with it. It's just, I prefer easy to clean parts. So with that being said, I'm gonna buy more of these. I absolutely love them. They run great in my experience. However, you guys know me, if something starts messing up, I'm gonna make a video about it and I'm gonna tell you guys about it if anything messes up moving forward. I highly recommend watching the How to Choose an AR-15 Bolt Carrier Group. I'll put a little link up here or up here, somewhere like that. Didn't really go brand specific. I just used brands as an example, but there are a few things you should look for in Bolt Carrier Groups and things like that. I'll have more videos like that coming on barrels and triggers and stuff like that. But hey, if you're looking for more content to binge on, go check that out. But hey, if you like this video, just go ahead and hit, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, whatever it is that you do. But until next time, I love you and you guys stay sexy.